Now we discuss the Bohr model. So in the uh, Rutherford model, we have seen that the mass and positive charge are concentrated in a very small region at the center of the atom called the nucleus. So after this proposal, uh, Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist, suggested that uh, the atom resemble a miniature planetary system. So uh, Niels Bohr was uh, working in a Rutherford laboratory at that time and uh, according to his model the electrons are circulating around the nucleus uh, like uh, the planets are circulating around the sun so um, and here the even though the electrons are circulating around the nucleus the atom does not collapse because of the electrostatic coulomb force of the nucleus and the electrons so we know that for uh, in the case of planetary system, the gravitational force keeps the uh, planets in their orbits. So the gravitational force between the planets and the sun keeps them in the orbits. So analogous to this, the electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus and the electrons keep the electrons in the uh, circular path. So in both the cases, the attractive force uh, gives the centripetal acceleration uh, necessary to maintain the orbital motion. So, and uh, this Bohr model is not the correct model of the atom, but it represents uh, the first step in understanding, achieving the understanding of atoms. Uh, the correct model is quantum mechanics that we will discuss later. So, this Bohr model is not a classical model. Quantization is there, but it is not a complete quantum mechanical model. So, we call it as a semi-classical model of the atom. Okay. So, now uh, we consider a hydrogen atom for simplicity with a single electron circulating about the nucleus so nucleus is a single positive charge plus uh, one e z equal to one in the case of hydrogen atom and uh, the radius of the orbit is r and uh, the mass of the electron is m uh, so this electron with mass m is uh, revolving with a constant speed v so even though the velocity I means the direction of speed is changing uh, the magnitude is a constant okay so uh, even though the speed is a constant the direction is constantly changing so there is an acceleration over here so therefore uh, the velocity is not a constant even though the speed is constant so now uh, here the attractive coulomb force between the nucleus and the electron provides the centripetal acceleration so we can write the magnitude of the force which is equal to uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 so the charge of the nucleus is plus e and that of the electron is minus e divided by r square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square okay so uh, the centripetal force should be equal and opposite to this force and therefore mv square by r is equal to opposite of this e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square so uh, from this we have already seen the velocity and we got the kinetic energy in the last class and uh, its kinetic energy half mv square so from this equation you can cancel 1 over r and 1 over r from here so mv square is equal to e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r and uh, kinetic energy which is half into mv square is half into this is e square by 8 pi epsilon 0 r and the potential energy of the system u is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 
q2 by r so uh, it is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 minus e square by r so the total energy is the sum of this uh, kinetic energy and potential energy so we can write it's uh, 1 over 8 pi epsilon 0 uh, 1 over r e square by r uh, minus uh, e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r so we can take uh, this uh, 1 over 8 pi epsilon 0 as a common factor so this into 1 over 8 pi epsilon 0 e square by r into 1 minus so, uh, when we take this, uh, we get uh, it's equal to, uh, yeah, 2. So, we have uh, minus uh, e square by 8 by epsilon 0. Uh, so, the total energy is the negative of uh, kinetic energy. Okay. So, uh, and this total energy is negative, this shows that the uh, electron is bound to the nucleus. So, uh, since the electrons are revolving around the nucleus, that means uh, the electrons are being accelerated. Any particle executing a circular motion is certainly accelerated since the direction of the velocity is changing. So, according to classical mechanics, an accelerated electric charge emit uh, electromagnetic energy continuously okay so as it uh, radiate energy its total energy would decrease so that means the electrons should uh, spiral around uh, the uh, towards the nucleus and finally should collapse but uh, this is not happening in the case of atoms to overcome this difficulty bohr uh, made a hypothesis he proposed that there are certain states of motion called the stationary states so in which the electron exists without radiating electromagnetic energy so according to bohr as long as the electron remains in an orbit there is no emission or absorption of the orbit so uh, he proposed a hypothesis at that time it was not uh, verified and uh, uh, there are certain uh, special states of motion called stationary states so in the stationary state the electron remains without a radiating electromagnetic energy and um, according to Bohr in the stationary state the angular momentum L of the electron can take only certain discrete value certain integral multiple of rho such angular momentum can have certain uh, discrete values which are given by integral multiples of rho such so the angular momentum of the electron can have values cross h, uh, 2 cross h, 3 cross h, etc. So n is an integer which, which can take values 1, 2, 3, etc. But it cannot have any fractional values uh, 1.5 cross h or 2.1 cross h or 3.5 cross h or 3.2 cross h or no. Uh, uh, angular momentum values vanilla angular momentum can have only discrete values so this is called the quantization of angular momentum and in a circular orbit we know that the position vector r uh, from the electron to the nucleus so that is this position vector r is always perpendicular to its linear momentum so velocity is along this direction and the linear momentum mv is also along this direction so r and p are perpendicular so the angular momentum l which is defined as r cross p is equal to uh, r p sin theta so the magnitude of angular momentum is r p so p is nothing but mv so this is mvr so when r is perpendicular to p the angular momentum is mvr so according to uh, Bose postulate this mvr 
is equal to an integral multiple of cross h where n is an integer which can take values 1 2 3 etc so now from this expression v is equal to n h cross by m r so now we substitute the value of v in the kinetic energy we get kinetic energy which is equal to half m v square which is equal to half into m into this v square that is n h uh, by m r whole square and we have found that the value of kinetic energy is equal to e square by 8 pi epsilon 0 r so substituting this um, we get half into m into n square cross h square divided by m square r square is equal to e square by 8 pi epsilon 0 r so this r and uh, the square here cancels and uh, we see that for different values of n we can have different values of r so we use the subscript rn and uh, we can take this rn towards our right side and we can get a value for rn rn is equal to half into uh, m square and m cancels half into uh, n square cross h square by m and uh, this will come here in the left side so that's equal to 8 pi epsilon 0 so this are cancelled by e square so that is equal to uh, 8 by 2 is 4 4 pi epsilon 0 cross h square by m e square into n square so uh, all the values of r are not possible only particular values of r are possible so rn is equal to this so when n equal to 1 we get r1 so that is 4 pi epsilon 0 cross h square by m e square so substituting these values of um, we can get uh, this is equal to uh, 0 0.0529 nanometer or uh, 5.29 into uh, 10 to the power uh, 11 meters okay so the r1 is the minimum radius possible that means the radius of the first orbit of the Bohr atom and it is defined as the Bohr radius a naught so, in terms of uh, this Bohr radius, uh, the radius of an nth orbit. So, this is nothing but A0 and uh, Rn can be written as n square A0. The radius of the nth orbit is equal to n square times A0 where A0 is equal to R1 uh, which is equal to the minimum radius uh, that an electron can have in a hydrogen atom. So, uh, this uh, the result is uh, very different from the uh, classical physics. So, in classical physics, all the um, orbits are possible, all the angular momenta are possible. For example, if a satellite is placed um, in the earth orbit, uh, so we can place it at any desired radius uh, by uh, boosting it to um, appropriate altitude and supplying the proper Tangential speed. Above, what is satellite sector? Namal Earth in situ revolve by kani le idr adinda speed namal in situ adine idr radius lim rotate yam. But this is not the case with the electron orbit. Only certain radii are uh, allowed. So uh, a naught, uh, four a naught, uh, nine a naught. Uh, 16 a naught etc are allowed in between 3 a naught patilla 3 nvara n square term in edam patilla and then 5 a naught uh, 5.3 a naught are not possible so since the radius is quantized the corresponding energy is also quantized upon total energy expression r in a bagadam r in gurthal we get en we can see that the energy levels of the electron and the hydrogen atom are also quantized. If we have a radius, hydrogen atom radius, we have quantum number. And here is called the quantum number of the orbit can be calculated. So knowing the value of A.